Story time about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So a little background information. I was 14 years old and had just started my freshman year of high school. And my brother and his girlfriend were both seniors. And we're going to call his girlfriend Riley. Now, Riley and my brother started dating in the middle of the summer. And you would think since they just started dating and basically just met each other that I wouldn't know her that well. But literally two days after they started dating, she started spending every single day at my house. I'm being serious. Like she had a whole duffel bag that had basically her closet in it. But that wasn't the problem. So in the summertime, my parents would plan a lot of family activities. And since they were called family activities, his girlfriend wasn't allowed to go. I mean, I think she would have been allowed to go, but she was also really disrespectful to my mom. So after one of our family days, my parents asked my brother if Riley would be joining us for dinner. And he just ignored them and went up to his room. And my room's right next to his so I could hear everything. And I guess Riley called him and she was complaining about me. She was like, she's the reason why your mom doesn't like me. I feel like she's jealous of me. She doesn't want us to be together. Which was really weird because I didn't give a fuck about what my brother did. So fast forward, school finally starts. And Riley lived about 20 minutes away from us. So my brother told her that he couldn't go and pick her up for school every day. But obviously I would ride to school with him because we lived together. Anyways, eventually she had a problem with that too. So my brother and I had to start leaving 30 minutes early to get to school so we could pick her up. So the first time that we pick her up, we pull up to her house. And obviously I'm in the front seat and she's just standing there. So my brother rolls down the window and he's like, get in the fucking car. We're going to be late. And then she literally has the audacity to start arguing with my brother in front of me about why she should get the front seat instead of me. So like I said, once she got in, she started screaming about how she should get the front seat instead of me. So I turn around and I'm like, last time I checked, you've only been here for two months. Stay in your fucking lane. And then she starts crying because she's like, oh my god, your sister's so mean to me. Like, I just feel like I should have more respect as his girlfriend. So fast forward to the weekend, my mom said that she needs to have a talk with me. And she's like, honey, I know you may not like your brother's girlfriend, but you have to stop being mean to her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've only had one conversation with her in the last week. And that was to tell her to stay in her fucking lane. And then I told her about everything going on. So she calls my brother down to ask him if it's true. And my brother was pretty pissed off at me, but he wouldn't lie. So my mom said that she was not allowed over the house anymore. And that he wasn't allowed to go pick her up from school until I got my license. So that just caused more problems between her and my brother. So he broke up with her. And then she started spreading rumors that she broke up with him because there was something weird going on between him and I. My dad beat the SHIT out of me at 3 a.m. I... 20-year-old male just lost all respect for my dad, 50-something last night. Essentially, he went to sleep a little earlier that night, and I stayed up until 1. He has a bad sleeping issue, and gets up randomly at night. At around 12.30ish I got up, used the bathroom, and grabbed some water, and I tried to do it as quietly as possible, which isn't easy because he sleeps with the door open, and the tiles and doors he installed creak like crazy, but he somehow woke up at blame for it. He couldn't sleep for another two hours, so round to 49 he came into my room, blasted some random music, messed with my alarm clock, and turned on my lights. This all startled me, and when I asked him what was wrong, he started blabbering like a child. You were walking around making footsteps going in and out of the bathroom at exactly 12.47, and because I ruined his sleep, he wasn't going to let me sleep all night. I told him that it was to use the bathroom and get water, because I was thirsty and he still continued to blabber like a child about how I ruined his sleep. I got furious because he was refusing to leave my room so I got up and stood in front of him, but he registered this as me staring him down and threatening him so he socked me right in the jaw. After my wisdom teeth removal either way, knocked me on the ground, beat me and pressed his elbow on my neck. I'm a really skinny guy and it's an insecurity for me and he got around 50 or so pounds on me. So I had to sputter and ask him to calm down. When he finally got off, he proceeded to put me down about if I was actually strong, I'd be able to get him off of me but I'm weak and underneath him. He said a bunch of other stuff about me, but I don't want to make this too long. The thing is, I could have probably beat the SHIT out of him, but I chose to step up and be the bigger man and decided not to. I just retreated to my room. Stayed up until 6 a.m., unable to sleep because of all the SHIT that he did and said. I woke up a few hours with skin peeled off my arm and pain on my neck and foot. My head's throbbing and I couldn't go back to sleep because of it all.
After my boyfriend and his four friends tried to assault me, they told me that it was a joke. But guess what? My boyfriend held me hostage in his apartment for four hours before he let me leave. I took your guys' advice and I decided to break up with him. Went to his place and knocked on his door. As soon as he opened the door, I told him I was leaving him. I had no intention of entering his apartment, but he grabbed my hand, pulled me in, and locked the door behind me. Then again, he started swearing up and down that him and his friends were not trying to actually assault me. And that what they did was just a really bad joke. I told him that I took pictures of all of the evidence, all of the ripped clothes and the bruises all over my body, and the saliva they left on me. And he said that I was overreacting. After they chased me around in a house, threw me down on the ground, held me down, and forcibly kissed me, I was overreacting? Then he grabbed me and started trying to kiss me. He said that if we did the dirty, we would connect again and I would feel his love. I pushed him off and then he got really angry. He said he wouldn't let me leave until I changed my mind. Then he grabbed me again and tried to kiss me again. Of course I pulled away and then he just threw me on the couch. Then he proceeded to talk to me for three hours telling me how much of a bad girlfriend I am. When he finally let me go I went straight to my parents house. Went straight to the cops and gave him all the evidence. They said that to test the evidence they would need at least six months. Now my boyfriend showed up to my house with his friends and guess what they did? That's when all the guys who assaulted me showed up to my parents' house where I was hiding. I was home alone because my parents were both at work. I hear a knock on the door and I did not expect it to be them, so of course I went and opened the door. Big mistake. As soon as I saw all of their perverted faces, I tried closing the door but they pushed in. And they came straight into the house without even asking for permission. Once again violating me. My boyfriend grabbed my face gently and tried to kiss me. When I pulled away, he said, I understand why you're upset. That's why I brought all these guys over here so we could apologize to you. At this point, I'm terrified. I'm alone and vulnerable and these guys are the ones that were chasing me up and down the house trying to rip my clothes off. I could tell in their faces that they wanted to jump me again. They all just stared at me, like right through me. Suddenly, one of them grabbed my hand and said, we just wanted to apologize. We took the joke too far and we want you to know that we weren't trying to hurt you. I pulled my hand away and asked them to leave. My boyfriend said, no, we're planning on staying with you for a little bit. Then they all went into the living room and sat down. That's when my boyfriend took me into the kitchen and asked me to serve them drinks. It's just another way for them to try to control me and play their sadistic games. That's when my boyfriend forced me to go in the kitchen and get my attackers drinks. That's when I made the decision to play along so that they wouldn't hurt me. Got them drinks and put them down on the table. They all just stared at me without saying nothing. Their disgusting perverted eyes all over my body. And that's when I realized I was in a really tight workout set. I remembered I had a hoodie in the kitchen and I went and put it on. Even though I put on that damn hoodie, I still felt naked. It felt like they could see right through my clothes. I grabbed a knife and put it in my hoodie. I come back outside and my boyfriend asks me if I'm gonna accept their apology. And I said yes. I knew it was the only way they would leave me alone. I looked at all of them and I said, I accept your apology. Then one of the other guys says, so you won't go to the cops? And I said, for what? And he said, you know, for messing with you. That's when the other guys told him to shut up. Finally, one of them stood up and said, you know you liked it. My boyfriend grabbed him and pushed him down on the floor. My boyfriend finally told them all to leave. As soon as I did, I locked all the doors and windows. So now these guys know where I live. I called my parents and they came home. What do I do? When I was like 21, I worked bottle service at a club in Charlotte. And one night I left early. I got like cut for some reason. I don't really remember why. I think it was just a really slow night. So they let me go around 1130. And I had to get gas on my way home. So I stopped at like this gas station blah. And I noticed this woman with her kid sitting on the curb at the gas station. And I walked up to her and I was like, hey, are you okay? Mind you, this was like six years ago so when i walked up to her i was like hey are, are you good like i just see you and your kids sitting here it's pretty late it's like is everything okay she's like yeah our car is broken down like a couple miles back so we walked over here like hours ago to see if we can get a charger because our phone's dead and i was like oh okay um well are you safe like do you need a ride and before you guys come for me for offering this woman a ride i realize now that that's probably not what i should have done granted like the situation was fine but anyway that's just not something i'd personally choose to do in today's time back to the story so i offered her a ride to wherever she was staying at the time and uh she was like yeah sure i'll be right back and i was like okay my car's right there just meet me there so she walks over to my car and then i noticed like she has a guy with her and i was like oh great um confused now like he wasn't with you just two seconds ago like what's happening so obviously at this point in time i'm starting to question <laughs> the niceness i'm offering out into the world why did i say it like that i don't know anyway so he gets in the passenger seat and I'm like, hi, I'm Peyton. Nice to meet you. What's your name? He tells me his name, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, so where are we going? They tell us, or they tell me it's right around the corner. It's not that far. It's like 20 minutes away. Cool. 
at that point I'm like, all right, um, that's fine. I've already committed. You know, I said, do you guys want to listen to any music? And the guy was like, yeah, actually, um, I'm a rapper. Do you want to hear some of my music? And I was like, sure. So I handed my phone. He pulls up his music and he starts playing this and I look over, I'm like, this is you? And he's like, yeah. I was like, this is really good. And he was like, yeah, man, like I'm really trying out here. I'm working hard. Blah, blah, blah. We get to where we're going. They were so nice. Um, they offered to give me gas money and I was like, no, you guys, totally fine. Like I just wanted to offer a helping hand and make sure you guys were safe. They were really appreciative and yeah. So when they left, obviously I totally forgot about it. And I was like, cool, I did like a good deed, whatever. And I moved on with my life. Years later, I'm like listening to the radio, whatever. And they announced this guy's name. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, did I? give this person a ride and now they're freaking famous yes yes i did i gave a famous rapper a ride when their car was broke down on the road before they were even a like famous rapper and now i'm like oh my god i can't believe i did that but moral of the story is don't just pick up random people like me okay I used to have this amazing hair girl named Susanna until one day I cheated on her. I mean, she took me back, but the story was there was this other girl. She lived closer to me. She was super, super cheap. And I was like, I will give her a try. And the first red flag was that she didn't want to do a consult at all. We just scheduled an appointment right away for a multi-color, multi-custom color, okay? And I showed up and I showed her the picture of what I wanted, which was to bleach my hair out like Elsa white, like Queen of the Dragons. I didn't watch Game of Thrones. I don't know what she's called, but white, white, white. And then like some light pink, like streak in it that's what I wanted and I showed her the picture and I said can you do this in the time we have allotted or should we plan to do multiple appointments because I'm happy to schedule more appointments and she was like oh no I can do it all today so we start the coloring process and the next problem was we were just a bad man we had no chemistry okay we couldn't talk about anything I literally pulled out my phone in the chair and googled icebreaker questions to ask her like, I wanted to be chatty. I wanted to talk. She didn't want to talk. So we just sat there in silence. She she put in the color first, which I thought was weird. I was like, I think we'd want to bleach my hair first, but she's the bro. Um, and then how it turned out was she put in these, like, almost like orange, like salmon colored streaks in my hair. Didn't lighten it at all. And she was like, we're done. And tried to send me away. And I was, like, near tears because, like, the the pink orange she put in looked so horrible because my hair was so dark at the time and I said please please like we have another hour can you please just lighten my hair a little bit I don't want to walk out of here like this I really don't like it I said I promise my hair lifts so fast it'll be really quick and also you know the next appointment is your sister and you messed this up so um I just like I begged her to keep me for the next hour and just lighten it as much as we could and she was really she, like she wasn't happy about it she was like fine and I can tell she was especially unhappy about it because as she was doing it she was yanking my hair really hard she was like just grabbing and pulling and I was like girl you're lucky I like this or I would be having words with your manager right now um, and I asked Susanna when I went back to her if that was normal. I said, was it just because we were short on time that she had to yank my hair? And Susanna was like, no, no matter how fast I need to go, I've never yanked someone's hair. So then she shows me my hair again. It's all finished. We're like 15 minutes after the hour that we'd planned. And it looked bad. It looked really bad. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. Thank you. Because there was nothing we could do at this point. And I was done with her. And I thought, like, I just... The hair pulling, like I felt like that was her being passive aggressive. So I go up, I pay her, I tipped her a full 20%, which I don't even know if you're supposed to tip 20% for hair, but I do. I tipped her, I got in my car and I cried. Then I drove an hour to Susanna's salon and I was like near tears and I was talking to the receptionist. I was like, can you tell Susanna I need her? And she said, Susanna's not in right now. And I said, can you just, can you just schedule a consultation appointment? And she said, yeah, sure. And I vowed to never leave her again, but then I moved away and now I'm scared to start dating new hairdressers. Story time. And I kind of need your detective instincts on this because Basically, someone hit my car while it was parked, and I have a hunch as to who it was, but I want to see if you come to the same conclusion as I did, or if I'm just crazy and making it all up. I'm going to show you some pictures. So what happened was, my car was parked on the street outside of a police station, and I went on holiday. And when I came back five days later, someone had hit my car, and this was what my car was like. As you can see, the back wheel was out, so the whole suspension was broken, all that was smashed, so it was quite bad. And it might not look that bad in the picture, but it was bad. My insurance had to pay like over 8,000 pounds to fix it. What you can see on this picture is something yellow on my wheel. Let's zoom into that. So from what I can tell, what this looks like is yellow reflective tape residue. 
So what I think happened is whatever car hit mine had that all over their car, like their car was covered in it. So when they hit and scraped mine, that came off of theirs and it stayed on my wheel. What types of cars are covered in yellow reflective tape? Think about that. Another thing that was on my car was this note and it was written on a police service memo pad. And it says detail for the damage to the back at police station front office. So I was like, okay, cool. A police officer either saw who hit my car. So they left that note on mine. They went to the police station. They left the license plate information of the person who did it. Or it was a police officer who hit my car. So they left that note. They left their information at the police station. And that was that. So I went inside the station and I showed them the note. And when they looked into the system, there was nothing. There was no information about what happened to my car. So this note talking about details was lying. What was also weird is that police officers will usually write their name or their phone number or their reference number when they leave these types of notes. There was none of that on this note, which is odd. Why wouldn't you leave your information on the note that you're leaving? So then I was like, hmm, oh, this is very sus. But I went back outside and I saw that there was CCTV that was facing where my car was parked. So hypothetically, it captured the incident. So I went back into the station, I told them about the camera, and I asked if I could either see the footage or if they could give me the license plate information of the car that hit mine. And they said, you have to email this person. So I emailed that person and they were like, no, 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 wrong department, email this person. I emailed that person. I had to email like seven different people and jump through so many hoops to try to get the CCTV, CCTV footage. And when I got to the last person I had to contact, they stopped answering. So to this day, I don't have the footage. I don't know who hit my car. My insurance doesn't know who hit my car. So my insurance had to like pay for everything and cover everything. Who do you think hit my car?